Wigan skipper just made an honorary fellow of the Health and Social Studies fac faculty at Lancaster Polytechnic last week. A tribute, I think, not only to his rugby, but to his physical fitness and his athletic skills. Lucas. Gregory does the little man who can make the break. And he does. And there it is. First time. The ploy works. Andy Goodway, former Great Britain international, roars in for his eighth try of the season. And what a difference a substitution makes. We talked about the lack of a ball player in the pack. Do you need one when you've got a half back we like Gregory? about great changes, and surely this must be a great substitution. John Mooney to perfection, Andy Gregory the little man, great support from Andy Goodway, strong lad, just what Wigan required. And again, it's all about that little man Gregory, as Gregory has the ball in his hands, he's always alert, he's always available, and who's more available than Andy Gregory to Andy Goodway? Let's... Gregory again, looking for the for the gap. Oh, well picked up by Eti. Good pass to Shelford. Eti again, good support play. He looks a very, very good uh, player, this young lad. Eti He's uh, just learning the game, just come into the Bradford Northern side, but certainly looking very, very effective. Bradford, when they move this ball, Ali, begin to put pressure on Wigan, don't they? Yes, I think Bradford uh, can smell a little bit of, uh, you know, can they, can they score a try here? They're really back in the game. The forwards are playing a very strong part again. Pendlebury. Look for the half play. Oh, he's got it. He looks him. He's going himself. And he's over. Oh, he's spotted the gap to John Pendlebury. A very experienced player. Sliced his way through. He couldn't get the pass out to inside. I think it was Paul Medley inside him. He elected to go himself. A good try, and that pulls Bradford North. Well, we've just been level. saying about the uh, efforts of the Bradford forwards. The smallest man in the Bradford pack, John Pendlebury. And I think we're going to be worried about this tackling. Twice, Sean Edwards and Stevie Hampson. And really, that should have been stopped. And uh, David Hobbs now to take the kick. Player coach appointed at the back end of last season. 32 goals to his credit this year. And this one to put his side in the lead. It's a good one. Uh, hesitation there from uh, David Hobbs, so those Northern supporters who trekked over the Misty Pennines, delighted at that score. Six points to four for Bradford. The far side. Wigan now need to put it back again. Bell. Edwards to Hadley again. Can he inspire them again? Good run. He does. Fires again. He's got the line. Simpson, the ball's inside. Has he gone forward? Yes, it has. John Pendlebury, a right grin on his face. Don't try for Ellery Hadley there. The ball went forward. But twice Hanley now has carved Northern up down this near side. And David Myers and Elry Hanley in, involved again three times in this move. And a lovely ball. Well, Wigan, that's the side that they started off with. But of course, since that first half, we've uh, had a substitute on there, that uh, scorer there, Andy Goodway, coming on for Kelvin Skerrin after 20 minutes. But uh, John Mooney, the Wigan coach, restoring Steve Hampson to full-back after bruised ribs. And Fran Obotica, the recent signing in June from New Zealand, coming on to the, onto the left wing. And the Bradford Northern side player coach David Hobbs reported a clean bill of health for his squad during the week. And of course, so much depended on those two halfbacks, Neil Summers and Brett Eaty. And as we've just seen from the highlights, they've certainly done a good job so far. Well led by John Pendlebury. No substitutions at the moment as we're about to move into the into the second half. Very cold day here at uh, Central Park as the players thread their way through the 
construction work of the brand new 1800 seater grandstand that's going up there behind the pulse and Bradford Northern leading by six points to four and just to the left of our screen there I do notice a substitute coming on number 15 there Craig Richards the big man there just to the left of our screen very powerful lad 21 years of age well, I think what you've got to look at here is the way that Wigan moved the ball. Gregory has two goals at this, but the little man is always in control. And what a substitution, Andy, good way. Good substitute by John Mooney and repairs him by a good try. And we hear from the, the dugouts that uh, more substitutions have been made. Gildar coming on for Dennis Betts, but there are the two skippers, two contrasting styles. John Pendleberry on the left. For Northern, the creative footballer, reminiscent more of the old-style ball handling number 13 and the all-running, all-tackling, all-action, Ellery Hanley. Second half about to get underway with substitutions. Gildart for Betts, Skerritt back on for Andy Gregory. We understand that Gregory took a knock to his leg, so I think that's a big blow Alec Andy Gregory off for Wigan. Well, obviously, Andy Gregory, a key man in uh, Wigan's plans, but it's going to be interesting in the second half what we're going to go on to really attack uh, Bradford with, because they want somebody to run with the ball, they're playing one-man football, there's not a lot of people in this Wigan side who really want to run with the ball, although they've got a lot of ability. And Bradford Northern again will be wanting to contain Wigan down here, number 15 there, Craig Richards. A big lad coming on for Carl Furbank, who we understand has got a dead leg. So, lots of players in the treatment room at half-time, and a few shocks as they come out. Andy Platt. Back to Edwards. Edwards now taking up the kicking role instead of Andy Gregory, as he was in the first half. To Marchant. £30,000 prize money at stake for the eventual winners of this Reader Trophy and over £270,000 prize money injected into the competition this season so a lot at stake I'm almost sure that uh, John Morney, the Wigan coach in this half will be saying to his players look we've got to break the tackles and we've got to run through the gaps Pendleberry Sensible kick from Pendleberry, keeping the ball low, gliding across the turf, very wet, very slippy. Good play. Referee Mr. Holsworth there in the centre, been very firm in his decisions. And for Northern, just having the one heel against the head in those scrum figures. Hanley, interesting to see Hanley there in his old stand up position. That was the role that he occupied when he used to play for Bradford Northern. Gildar, Botica. Such a nice footballer, this fan of Botica. Yes, and I think what Wigan will be looking for is an early score because really they're not playing their style of football they used to play in. Uh, there's a little bit of the faction in the crowd who are really getting at one or two of these players. Gildar. But Wigan, the supreme side of the of the 80s that's a good ball to Iro. well that's an equally good tackle by his uh, fellow countryman Darrell Shelford Goulding just kept it in nicely just kicked there by that friggin youngster still an apprentice in the game and it would be interesting to see who takes up the, the scrum half position for Wigan. It is, uh, it is Sean Edwards. Well, I think uh, that uh, John Moon is in a funny position there where uh, he's not got a natural hooker on the side. And obviously Bobby, Bobby Golding has uh, been in that position before. And Sean Edwards will find it very comfortable playing scrum half. Yes, I think uh, John Moon doesn't look too troubled at the moment.
I think you've got to be impressed with these uh, two half packs of Bradford Northern, both the scrum half and the standoff. Certainly not afraid of getting stuck in to the Wigan players. Summers again. Likes to take the ball forward. Wigan crowd getting behind them now. And this is better tackling from Wigan. And scared there in Dean Bell. Bell, experienced player, setting the example. Hobbs again. Oh, brilliantly taken that uh, by Hampson off that kick from Hobbs. And well recovered. To Bottica again. Beats one man. But turn of pace to Kevin Iro. This is good rugby. To Myers. This is the class from Wigan. Moving them all about. Using their pace out wide. Platt. Just five minutes gone in this second half. Six points to four for Bradford Northern. Hanley. Bottiker again coming inside. Myers going for the line, but a good tackle. Roger Simpson there, getting through a lot of work. But this is vintage Wigan now, the short ball. They've lost it. And I think that's where Wigan are falling down, really. You would expect them to really put something on from that position. It was a six tackle, and really, one or two players got in the wrong place. Shelford, he's got Cornwall on his outside now. He's got Hanley to beat. He's beaten him. Can he beat Edwards, though? Superb tackle by Sean Edwards. Brilliant cover play by the Latin halfback. And a good run by Gerald Cordell. I think it might, game. Have, it might have been a good run, Ray, but obviously I think Gerald Cordell should have been made to get up and play the ball. He saw that there was nobody there, and really I think that should have been a penalty. But this game now certainly come alight. Hobbs, the chip kick. Play on, play on. Can Bentley score? He does! Well, that decision will be talked about for some time to come. But Paul Bentley took advantage there of that play-on decision. Hobbs chipped the ball through. He was obstructed. Medley continued. And the try was given by Mr. Holsworth. I think when everybody's looking for the obstruction here from David Hobbs, the referee does the right decision, play on, and Medley looks as though he was didn't know what he wanted to do, dribbles the ball over the line, and that is a shock. And again, you just see Medley, uh, he looks at one time as though he was wanting to pick it up, but he keeps his nerve, keeps his cool, and scores a try. Yes, I don't think Medley could believe what happened there. He might well smile. That's his sixth try of the season. And I, I, I think that uh, even Steve Hampson at full-back, Alec, felt it was going to be a penalty given. Well, you know what they always say, always play to the whistle, and I think that's what Wigan were guilty of, not playing to the whistle. So, Hobbs, should be a simple kick. It is. No problems to David Hobbs, the player coach, and he must be satisfied with this 12 points to four lead here now by Bradford. You can see him urging his men on. And Alec, you've been a player coach yourself. You know, is it better to be on the field or off the field, you think? Well, I think he better be on the field. He leads by example, he's got control of his troops, and certainly he led by example then. That was a lovely little chip by Hobbs, and good support play by uh, Medley. So, many thought that uh, Wigan were going to cruise through to the semi-finals of this competition, but Bradford are having another say. And there is a coach off the field, John Morney, a player himself with Cronulla in Australia. And I Wigan a, now I, desperate to keep Northern down here. I get a feeling, uh, Ray, that if Bradford score another try, I think John Morney will be coming out of that stand and certainly be sitting on the bench. Pendlebury. Distributed play well in the first half, this... Uh, Number 13, John Pendlebury. To Hobbs again. Rogers! The kick. He hasn't been finding touch, David Hobbs, but what he has been doing is putting pressure on Hampton, containing him down in this half, but he doesn't this time.
Wigan, five times winners in the 80s of this competition. Winners in the last two seasons. That's a good run, but can't get the ball away. I think one or two of the Wigan supporters are getting a little bit uh, angry down below here, but uh, all they want the players to do is run through the gaps and support the man with the ball. And that's a good run by number 10 there, Kelvin Skerritt, a former Bradford Northern favourite. And Wigan desperate to get back in this game now, moving the ball better. Hanley. Bell. But there's that man, Summers again. Every time they try to move out the play, Summers is there. Good ball to Hampson. That's a tricky kick. And Cordell having to kick the ball into touch. And I think what we see there is one of the faults of this modern rule of a team when they kick a ball. Cordell was trying to allow the ball to go out to touch so that he would get head and ball in the scrum. And Stevie Hampson had a lovely little chip towards the uh, touchline. Gentle Corden caught in two minds here, two players, and it's a good job Corden got his boot to that. And because Cordell kicked the ball out, it's a scrum down. And it's Sean Edwards to put the ball in. Mr. Holdsworth not happy with that. He wants them back on the 10 yard mark. A lot of poundage in that pack. Two 16 stone men there for Wigan. Lucas at 8 and Skerritt at 10. And a good drive. Hanley. Looking to launch Hanley. That's a good play. Iro. Back to Myers. Just 10 minutes gone in this second half. 12 points to four for Bradford Northern. I think that Wigan are going to have to make use of uh, Kevin Ido a little bit more than what they are doing. And really, Kevin needs to run with the ball a little bit more. Goulding. Lucas looking for the dummy, but doesn't find any way through David Hobbs. But Wigan still sensibly playing this near side. Skerritt. Wigan edging nearer now, 12 yards from this Bradford Northern line, the crowd beginning to get behind them, Edwards again. Missed timing again between Edwards and Hanley. But again, Ray, I think you've got to look to uh, good tackling from Bradford because they're covering all the options and really when they've got the ball, they look more enterprising than Wigan at this moment in time. And I think it's going to be a penalty. A penalty there, it was a good tackle initially by Dean Bell on Roger Simpson. And I don't think Mr Holdsworth agreed with Goodway coming in. Well, I think what we'll find here is the, the way the tackle in, it's a tackle by Dean Bell. I think what he's done here is holding him onto the ground and won't let him get up. In Goodway comes in and there certainly was no need for that. And that's a good relieving kick there by Neil Summers. Bradford splashed out half a million pounds in the last 18 months, recruiting from experienced from the league professionals and union stars, and certainly the third position in Division One. And the performance today shows the value of that. Very cold out there on that pitch. The fog, freezing fog, only lifted about an hour before kickoff. And a penalty. A penalty against Wigan for not getting down in the scrum when Mr. Holsworth wanted it. I, I think the penalty was, was for uh, Bobby Goodway, uh, Bobby Goulding telling uh, John Holsworth that he couldn't get in the pack. Now, anybody who knows who's played in this pack, you've got to get your head in when the referee says. Richards, big powerful forward, this lad only 21 years of age, a contender for the Great Britain under 21s. But Wigan tackling now, a little bit more bite, a little bit more fire. Hitty, that's a good ball from Summers to Medley. 
that's the sort of area where Paul Medley likes to be launched out wide, two good balls from the half-back Summers and Eti. and just the mist beginning to come back down again well played by Myers Iro needs to get running now but good tackle superb tackle by Paul Medley Bell Good tackling performance from this Bradford pack. Yes, I think you've got to admire the way Bradford is sticking to the game plan. They know they've got a lot of individual players in uh, this Wigan side who can win the match, but they know they can't go without the legs. Lucas. That's good play. Good way. Looking to launch Myers. But the cover time and time again from Bradford is out there on the touch lines. Moxon, we just want to hold the ball, bring the ball in midfield, allow his pack to get back. 15 minutes gone in the second half. Wigan still trailing there by 12 points to four, desperate to get back in the game. Roars have come on Wigan, ringing around this famous Central Park ground. But it's Northern who are coming on, it's Northern moving forward. Brian Noble. And I think Bradford will be happy just to play this type of game. They realise that they're in front and doing the basic right, and that's what they are doing, controlling the ball and controlling the game. Pops, good gummy. Pops and uh, judging the ball well. Perfect ground conditions, testimony to the, the Wigan ground staff. They had the underground heating on since Wednesday, it's in perfect condition. Iro again. I think, as you said, Alec Wigan needing to launch Kevin Iro, this big number three down the middle now. Well, they need to launch somebody to run with the ball because everybody looks as though they want to lay the ball off and nobody wants to run with the ball. And the thing we have there, I think uh, Ellery will make the best of this. Certainly, that looked to me just an ordinary tackle. It wasn't hard, it, wasn't, it might have been a little bit high, but I don't think there's any need for this. So, the penalty against John Hamer. And John Hamer, as Ellery Elney, is a very, very strong man. Now, watch the tackle. It's not that bad. It really looks worse than what it is. But watch what happens after. That might be the problem. Well, the problem for Wigan there was not in finding touch, and you can't do that in a third round. Bradford using this pack. Simple rugby. Good play. It's this lad Neil Summers again. Now then, was Medley obstructed? He's going himself. Oh, tremendous run. And yes, it's a penalty. I felt there was an obstruction against Paul Medley. Good run there, superb run by Neil Summers. And I think what you've got to say, should that have been an obstruction try? Because certainly Neil Summers was uh, running in the clear and Paul Medley certainly would have scored from there. Well, obstruction try or not, I think the right decision... And we'll see given. from here, young uh, Neil Summers, what a cracking game this young boy's having. Flips round Danley, now watch Paul Medley inside. Took off the ball by Dale Bell, now would he have scored from that position? Certainly Neil Summers looked inside, Alec, and there was nobody there to give the ball to. Well, I think he looked inside, he saw we're Medley with him, and all of a sudden he was taken out of the game by Dean Bell, and I think we're going to really a little bit lucky to get away with that. They've got a penalty, but it could have been a lot worse. And a little cramp there for Neil Summers. Busy old Ronnie Barrett, just uh, giving running repairs. And now then, this, I think, a very vital goal for, for David Hobbs. If he can string this lead out to 14 points to four, then Wigan really will have a mountain to climb. It should be an easy kick, no wind out at all. Oh, he misses it, he misses it. 
now then did a little nerves did a little tension get to that player coach there that could be a bad miss Alec well that was a very very crucial kick and uh, you know you've got to feel sorry for your time for goal kickers but uh, David Odds when he looks at that he'll be really really disappointed and with just 20 minutes to go those two points could have proved the difference so Wigan breathe again can they get back into this game I think you find out when people uh, have a chance and don't take it uh, they're made to suffer and uh, Wigan need to get back into this game very very quickly indeed Hobbs, Richards. Just looking at the size of some of these uh, Bradford forwards. This young boy on the uh, floor now. I don't know what they put into the tee in Bradford, but there's certainly some big lads up there. Hobbs, Pendlebury. And here, one of the slightest of forwards, but one of the better footballing forwards. Hobbs again, putting that kick through, pushing Wigan back time and time again. That's well kept in by Botica. Had a good game on the left wing, this lad, Fano Botiger. Been troubled with hamstrings and a broken toe this season. Hampson. Goodway. Good run by Goodway. Wigan need to gather some steam down the middle here. Handley can't offload the ball. I think the way the thing that's impressing me about this Bradford side is the tackling. They're really covering all the park and they're not leaving too many gaps for any of the superstars to run through. Moxon. Good tackling. Certainly, Ellery Hanley doing his stint of tackling. Well, I've never seen him uh, make as many tackles, but uh, he's really competing in this game. And uh, Paul Medley here, number 11, surely back to the form that took him on the Great Britain Tour in 88. Doing a fine stint on the outside with the running and the tackling. Northern. In possession, John Heyman. I think it's a plan, isn't it, in this uh, Bradford side where they know how to do the basics, run and support the man. And every time there's a break, there's a white right jersey support. Yes, the knock on the Andy Platt looking at uh, Mr. Horsworth, but it was a ball off the shoulder of a Wigan player. And uh, Mr. Holsworth just saying to uh, Sean Edwards, accidental offside, head and ball to Bradford, of course, under the laws, he's quite right. Well, I don't think uh, John Oldworth needs to tell the Wigan players who's right and who's wrong. They know who's right and who's wrong. Good battle there now between Bretty and Sean Edwards. Richards. He's a powerful lad, he likes to gallop. He takes the putting down. I think that is the problem with this Bradford side. The, the little... Uh, bit bigger than the Wigan lads and the certainly Richard since he's come on was causing them all kinds of problems Simpson <laughs> Simpson and Lucas almost having a chat there <laughs> We don't often see that done these days, but uh, David Hobbs, I think, wanted to give his back uh, a rest. Hanley. Oh, good half tackle there by, uh, well, Phil Hennywell there, number four, 14, the substitutes. Coming on for Neil Summers. Neil Summers out with a tall calf muscle. And here is Hanley now. semi-finals until they put paid to this man Wigan now on the attack Skerritt good tackle learn again by Richards and Helliwell I think this lad uh, Neil Summers going off 
could be a, a blow for Northern. And it could be a blow, but uh, did you see Ellery Anley then? He was saying to his players, look, we've got to run with this ball, and surely anybody supporting Anley then, that would have been a try. Good way. Wigan then, with just over 15 minutes left to claw their way back into this, uh, this match. 12 points to four for Northern. Edwards, that's a good high kick, oh it's a good, well it was a fortunate bounce for Wigan and an unfortunate bounce for number three there, Donald Shelford, so knock on, Wigan's head and ball, the pressure that Wigan needed, good kick from Sean Edwards there. Well, this is obviously a practice kick by Wigan, and uh, Donald Shelford be a little bit disappointed, personally I thought there was a little touch of offside. Wigan's Handley now at standoff, providing a, a real threat. Bell, and another six tackles. Pennywell there, rather foolishly kicking through. Gives Wigan six more tackles. Back to Hampson. This Bradford Norman defence now really being tested. Yorkshire Grit, Lucas. I get the feeling it's now or never for Wigan. Goulding, too far. Well, he's given a penalty, tackled off the ball. And again, Ray, I think that John Aldridge has been a little bit kind to Wigan. I don't think there's anything wrong with Bobby Goulding, and I certainly can't believe that he's given obstruction for this kick. Surely that was man and ball at the time of the kick. Well, Mr Holsworth is on the spot, and he judges that it was an obstruction and that's what counts and I think Wigan are right to go for goal he's just explaining to Brian Noble a little nod and a wink from Mr Holsworth and again an equally as vital a kick here for Botica as the one we saw David Hobbs miss five or six minutes ago If Bottica could kick this, then of course that would just make a vital try and a goal difference. Twenty-four goals this season, and that's his twenty-fifth. So Wigan inch a little nearer, thanks to that Bottica two points. Wigan six, Bradford twelve. And again, we'll just look at this incident, have a look at Bobby Goulding, now watch the man with the ball, he dummies won't me, is the man committed when he kicks the ball? And I think you've got to say yes. So, Bradford to kick off, Pendlebury. Puts it along the floor, hoping for a knock-on, but Hampson sensibly plays it to Gildart. And I think now we're going to have at least 10 minutes of Wigan pressure. They know they're back in this game. They're just one try and a goal behind, and that kick of David Dobbs could it prove costly. Skerritt needs a couple of charging, powerful runs from this Wigan pack to tech play down to the Bradford line. Goulding. Beginning to move now, like the half back that he really is. Hanley. That's a good ball to Hampson. Oh, he's got some space. He's got Wigan queuing up. Hanley again. Edwards. Still Wigan. Panic there in the Bradford Northern ranks. And suddenly, Alec, I think Bradford are letting it slip. Well, I think since the loss of young Neil Summers at standoff, they're finding a little bit more space out of the wide outside. But surely that Wigan then, with four men outside and uh, really looking to the right or the left, I think would have been try on the plate, but they're holding the ball in one hand and not looking for support. Northern holding the ball. 
not so much because they want to but they can't get away here from this vice-like grip that Wigan tackling putting on none better there than that man in the scrum cap Ian Lucas that's a good kick well picked up by Hampson well read oh and a good ball to Myers good tackle by Brett Hitty. Hanley again inspiring this side Bell good tackling stint against there by Darrell Shelford and I think you get the feeling now that the Wigan crowd can sense that there's something going to happen they're getting behind Wigan now and really Wigan are putting all the pressure on and just over 10 minutes left in this match Wigan look to have Bradford on the rack here now but of course it's still Bradford leading 12 points to 6 Lucas Taking some pulling down now, this big lad has Bradford more than possibly beginning to tire. Good way. prepared to let the minutes tick away but really this is not the place to be in with Wigan Wigan are throwing everything at them by the kitchen sink and surely Bradford's got to come away and keep controlling the ball like they are doing but Bradford can't come away this tackling now from Wigan is sure it's strong but they're having to resort now to the Hatton half-back coming away with the ball I think you find out in positions like this where you have pressure all the time, you've got to take one of your chances. Hampson again. Hampson causing more and more problems now. Myers. Had a good game this afternoon, David Myers. Just a few chances. I think it's looking ominous now, playing to uh, Iroh's side. They really know that he's the big fella who can score tries for them. Northern desperately hanging in here now to the tackle. Back to Dean Bell. Bell creates his first for Iroh. Cuts back inside to Hanley. Mr. Holdsworth has given his decision a knock on and this is the sign of a captain here Dean Bell looks as though he just might sneak in here but again good covering from Bradford oh Ellery watch the little pick up and the little knock on and uh, John Morney put Dennis Betts on now in the second row for Ian Lucas I think he possibly feels that now he needs another runner he needs more pace to get that vital try but I think if there's going to be any uh, positions where there is going to be try scored, it's on the right-hand side where Ido is, because they're causing all kind of havoc down that side. Just eight minutes left, and Northern battling to get away from here. They haven't been away from this line here now for the past 10, 15 minutes. And suddenly, they may be in the lead 12-6, but the momentum since Summers departure from the field, Alec, has gone. Well, we did say before that it could be cramp, and... Uh, if surely if it's only cramp you must get him back on that field because Bradford Norton is certainly missing him that's a good kick that's the sort of kick that Bradford Northern had to put in there to get Wigan back on the line to Botica now then Wig Wigan got to get away from here very very quickly just seven minutes to go in this set Regal Trophy, third round, Bradford Morgan clinging to that score, 12 points to six. But Wigan now moving the ball well. Skerritt. 
having a stronger second half here against his older playing colleagues at Bradford. Good way. I think it's important now that Wigan do control the ball. They've got to play the six tackles, they've got to take chances, and they've got to run with the ball like they are now. And here they are now, little Goulding, coming down the middle. Goulding took a knock there, and again, looking for a high ball, possibly from Edwards. All play on, but he loses it. Vettiti, number seven there, in the role of the of the sweeper, doing a good job. Good New Zealand influence, once again at Bradford Northern. Players in the past like Joe Phillips and Jack McLean, and now modern-day Shelford and Itty. I think we were talking about before, what does a player coach do when he's on the field? Now, I think David Dobbs knows that one or two of his troops are tiring, and surely this is the time to lead by example. Wigan ball again, five minutes to go. The crowd rolling behind them. They've got to move this ball out wide to Botica. Hanley taking the ball, standing still, but still very difficult to put down. Platt. This Bradford defence still holding. And I think Wigan do really have to move this ball about. They'll not break but Bradford down, playing down the middle. They must move the ball out wide. It's a good way. He's got Iroh with him. Still manages to get the ball away. The pressure. Dennis Betts. This is what he's been brought back on the field for. The runs. And the sixth tackle coming up. Hanley elects to run. He goes for the line. Oh, superbly picked up there by Darren Moxon, Bradford Northern Hearts beat again as the pressure goes off, but still Bradford Northern can turn near this line, they can't get away from here no matter what they do, this Bradford pack put a lot of work in, put a lot of graft, but they are tiring, they're tiring rapidly, and the question is can they hold on? Well, I think not only can they hold on, they've got to find a way to get out of this uh, position where they're in now. They've been pinned down in their own 25-yard metre uh, area for the last 10 minutes, and really, this is good pressure by Wigan. Just less than four minutes to go. John Fendlerberry sensing that, puts the long kick in. Perfectly judged by Hampson. Hanley to open out play. <laughs> Wigan now have got to swing this ball across the field, Gildart. I think really it should have gone out to the banks. That's the place where they're going to score. Edwards, good switch of play. Good ball to Myers. He's got space on the outside. Simpson's third again. And I think that's the way that we're going to go on a score. Surely moving it to the flanks. They've got that little bit extra pace. Iro again. All it needs is one play. One movement. Flat. But still this northern side from Adam. Yet another six tackle coming up. Edwards. The long ball to Myers. Well, he had to put the kick in. Picked up gratefully there by that player coach David Hobbs and surely Northern now will go through the routine of playing these six tackles out. And I think what Bradford need now is just to control the ball, just six tackles, do the basics right and then surely the big boot down the field. Uh, they've been pinned back in this 25 metre early yard for 25 minutes and they're really, really struggling. Just less than two minutes left. Bradford clinging to this lead, 12 points to six. Surely Bradford have got to get this ball downfield. This is what Hobbs will be looking for. Not far enough. Just over a minute to go. Kevin Iro looks for the gap. He got Myers on the outside. It's 
seconds ticking away here. A semi-final place at stake. Tremendous, powerful run there by Kelvin Skerritt. Four more tackles to go in this sequence. Wigan desperate to keep in. Hanley, the man of the match here. And I think surely, Ray, you've got to move this ball out wide. Wigan are in the dying seconds of this game, and they must keep this ball alive. One minute to go, 60 seconds to go. 20 yards from the northern line. Bradford clinging on with a magnificent defence. Edwards going for the line! Now then, the kick to be vital. He's lost it. And is that to now to be Bradford Northern's game? Surely it wanted the kick. Northern will hold on to this ball. They'll take it from the at in half back position. It'll not be attractive rugby, but it'll be effective rugby. Seconds to go. Ellery Hanley there, the man of the match, inspired his Wigan side, but as yet, not to victory. And I think every yard is vital as far as Bradford are concerned. And surely the big boot will come into play any second. Ah, Bradford now to move into the full Freedom Trophy semi-final. If they do, it's a feather in the cap for player coach David Hobbs to bring the side to Central Park <laughs> and win in a cup competition. And it's a kick like that from David Hobbs. The winner, there it is. He puts his hands in the air. The shock result of this competition. Wigan are out, and I don't think David Hobbs will be too concerned which club he draws in the semi-final on Monday morning. That semi played on a neutral ground, but men there, like Roger Simpson, they've done enough tackling here this afternoon. Northern's third consecutive win over Wigan, and Northern's player coach there, and those two new half-backs have masterminded this. Not many coaches can boast this here at Central Park. Tony Marchant applauding the Bradford fans who travelled over the Pennines this morning. Superb result for Bradford. The third consecutive win over Wigan in the last six months. 12 points to six for Bradford Northern. Quite a game, the holders go out. Well done, Bradford Northern. First semi-final on Grandstand next Saturday. Time we caught up uh, with some football, we'll go straight away to Highbury, second in the table, Arsenal, against sixth in the table in the first division, Wimbledon. Tony Gabbard. Well, for half an hour, Bob, we wonder if the visit of Wimbledon could be the occasion to upset Arsenal's unbeaten record. Wimbledon, without the huff and the puff these days, had played equally as tidily as Arsenal had. But then the Gunners scored twice in the space of four minutes. Wimbledon, number five, Dean Blackwell missed a simple ball down the middle, and Paul Merson joyfully cracked in number one. Moments later, Tony Adams made yards across the penalty area to meet a deep corner and score with a powerful header. With almost an hour of the competition left, it seemed that it was all over. But right on the stroke of half-time, Kuznetsky, the pole, was unchallenged inside Arsenal's six-yard box to pull one back, and they might yet upset the Gunners. 2-1 half-time. There's confirmation of it as we go through the Division 1 board. Coventry City 1, Manchester United 1, Mark Hughes' eighth goal of the season. That was after five minutes. Kevin Gallagher after 39 minutes equalising for Coventry. Coventry still without a League 1 win under their new manager, Terry Butcher. Derby County 1, Chelsea 3, quite a scoreline there. Kerry Dixon put Chelsea ahead only for Dean Saunders to equalise. Kerry Dixon got his second. Uh